A couple of days ago, I received something that's probably one of the nicest things that anyone has uh, ever given me. Dick in Germany sent me a message about 10 days ago saying, I've sent you something in the mail and I know you don't have it in your collection. So I thought, great, it'll be a record. Really look forward to that. I'll do an unboxing video. So when the parcel came, sure enough, I got the camera out, opened the box, and then this happened. Okay, here we go. Packed it very well. It's in cardboard, in cardboard. Okay, all right. What's this? That's weird. I was caught off guard when I opened that box, expecting a record. So I couldn't really use the unboxing footage, hence I'm going to show you what it is now that was in that box. Have you ever seen one of these before? Well, I hadn't, hence my nonplussed reaction. This is actually related to this single that you can get if you buy the book that Dick and I have finished from Memphis to Tokyo in all good Elvis shops very soon. This is actually the stamper for the A side of that record, Your Cheating Heart. So what Dick did, he approached the company that pressed the records and told them that he wanted the stampers. And they said, OK, we'll sell them to you, but you must promise not to use them in future. So he sent me the A side stamper and kept the B side stamper. And as I say, this is not just a quite incredible thing to uh, to receive, but it's also a really good memento of the experience of writing the book, which, although it took a long time, it's actually been very rewarding. And uh, hopefully people will actually like the book when they get it. I was actually planning on expecting a record. I was planning on carrying on the video talking about that record, whatever it was. But um, I didn't get a record. I got uh, I got a record part, if you like. So I'm going to go away and think about what to do with the second part of the video. If you're a vinyl nerd like me, then you may well enjoy this video. Definitely five out of five on the nerdometer, I would say. The Japanese are well known for producing records in small runs, particularly back in the 50s and 60s. Today I'm going to show you five copies of two different records, so ten records in total five copies of a single that's very common and five copies of an album that's relatively rare. Now, nine of the 10 records have completely different sets of stampers. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this video, how the Japanese numbered their stampers at these two different points. One of these records is from the mid 60s, one is from the late 1950s. So I'll show you uh, what system they use to number the stampers. And I'll tell you when each record was actually made, actually pressed. So uh, sounds like good nerdy fun to me. So let's get on with it. The first record or records we'll look at is the 1964, July 1964 single, Kissing Cousins. So I've got uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five copies in there. So let me tell you how they weren't numbering the stampers at that point, 1964. Um, well, I'll use the first, ex first record by way of illustration. The number on this record here on the A side, it's got a 1, 1, 1, and then it's got four dots. Okay, so 1, 1, 1, and then four dots. A bit like the number four on uh, die or dice. And on the B side, it's got a 1, 1, 1, and then six dots. So the arrangement is like five like on a, on a dice, and then a, another number one beside it. So that's that one there. This copy here, has different stampers completely. It's got a one, one, two, and then one dot on the A side, and a one, 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 and uh, five dots on the B side. This copy does not have its insert, just the record and the sleeve. It's one, one, two, and then two dots on the A side. One, 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 and uh, seven dots on the B side. So you can see they're all slightly different. 
And then I've got two copies here. These are both exactly the same, same two stampers on both sides. So 112.7, sorry, 112.8 or eight dots on the A side and 111 and two dots on the B side. All these records were actually pressed at the same time, July 1964, when the release came out. So you can see that they were really getting through the stampers there. The next record that I have to show you is an album from the 50s. And this one is not as common, not by any stretch of the imagination. So this is the first issue of the King Creole album. So we've got five copies here to have a look at. There's one, two, three, or, and where's the other one? Oh, there it is, on, on the wall. And number five on the wall there. So yeah, five copies of the first issue of King Creole. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Did he show six records or only five? Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this guy's showing off, sh showing, you know, five copies of the first issue of King Creole. But by the time you see this video, there will only be two left. The other three will have been sold. The only two that will still be here, probably, are that one there on the wall. And this one here, this is my export copy that I showed in um, a video a few months back. And not many of you watched that one, so please go back and watch it if you haven't seen it. So let me tell you about the stamper numbers on these records and when they were released, because if you'd asked me a year or two ago, when were these five records released, I would have said they were all released in October 1958, but I would have been wrong because only one of them was released in October 1958. And uh, wouldn't you know it, it's that one there. So this one here is the oldest one of the five. And the stampers on this copy here, it's 111.1 on both sides. So that's the lowest stamper possible on both sides. And that's the way that they numbered the stampers from 1958 to 1962. So it was a three digit number, one, 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 and then a dot, and then another number after the decimal point. My theory as to what those numbers mean is, well, the number after the decimal point is the number of the stamper itself. The same with the Kissing Cousin single with the dots. The number of dots means the number of the stamper. The third number, 111, that one would be the mother, I guess. The middle number, I'm guessing, is the lacquer. And the first number, I assume, is the master tape number. The first number almost never changes. Uh, I've checked hundreds and hundreds of Japanese Victor records, and the first number almost never changes. The third number often changes, especially as the records get older. And the middle number occasionally changes, especially with a... Um, a more popular title. So what about the other ones, the other copies that I have here? Well, let me tell you what they are, and then I'll tell you when they were released. The next one, which is my export copy, that has a 113, what, sorry, 111.3 stampers on both sides. And that one was pressed in December 1958. So that was October. The export was December. The next one I have here, this one was also pressed in December 58. It has a 111.5 on the A side and a 111.4 on side two. And this copy here, you may have seen me unboxing this one. I did a video. I bought a big set of records and this was in there and uh, it was in rather nicer condition than I was expecting. This one has a 111.7 on side one and a 111.6 on side two. So that one actually was pressed in January 1959. And the nicest copy that I have is this one here. And that one has a 111.8 on side one and a 111.7 on the second side. And this one was actually manufactured in October 1960. 
So you might think, well, how do you know when those records were actually pressed? Well, the information is right there in the runout groove. And I'll talk about that in another video in more detail. And you can also find out about that information in the book that Dick Decker and I have written and published on all of Elvis's Japanese uh, records, LPs, singles, EPs, and 78s. And the details of that will be in the description below. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, fire away. But, uh, thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time. Cheers.